Americans are maced in their faces for asking questions like, why is my community poverty stricken, yet corporations are making billions of dollars out of that poverty? I'm almost finished. The criminalisation of truth is a weapon of all those whose corruption maintains their power. The coward media in this country must ask themselves whether turning a blind eye to true journalism um, or to a true journalist possible incarcerations for exposing the truth is an attack on them all or not. The ones who answer no are simply the servants of this criminal capitalist dictatorship. We must always remember that Bradley Manning is still behind bars while we are free. WikiLeaks, Manning and Assange, continue your fight. The MUA Sydney branch will be with you all the way. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Fantastic. Our next speaker is Fred Fuentes. Fred is a co-convener of the Latin American Social Forum here in Sydney uh, and a supporter of WikiLeaks and Assange. And perhaps, you know, he might, as many people have said to me today, remind us all that we could be writing to President Correa of Ecuador to urge him to favourably consider Julian Assange's application for asylum. Thank you, Fred. Uh, well, like many of you, when we woke up that morning uh, to hear the news that Julian Assange had sought asylum in the Ecuador Embassy, we as a Latin America social forum, a coalition of Latin American community groups and solidarity activists from countries such as Chile, Uruguay, Venezuela, El Salvador, Nicaragua, we knew we had to respond immediately. And there was two reasons for that. The first was because we have no doubt that Julian Assange's life is in danger. We know that we can expect nothing of this current Australian government to defend his rights. They were rushing over themselves to accuse him of being guilty. They didn't know what he was guilty of, they just knew he was already guilty. The federal police had to then tell him that actually he had committed no crime. But yet the persecution of Julian Assange by the Australian government continues. Julian knew that and he knew he had to find asylum somewhere else. We are also absolutely 100% sure that he will get no uh, help from the US government. As Latin American solidarity activists, we know of the long history of attempts to silence, assassinate, kill individuals and entire peoples that have tried to rise up against US imperialism, against the role of the US in Latin America. Military dictatorships that have come on the backs of tens of thousands of people being killed all of them funded by the US, why on earth wouldn't they want to get Assange? And I think Rafael Correa, in his interview with Julian Assange, summed it up very nicely as to one of the, why the US hates Assange so much. Because he raised an old story that uh, has been mentioned by other Latin American presidents, and they've asked the question, well, why is it that a military coup has never happened in the US? And the simple answer is, it's because there's no US embassy in Washington. Well, when you reveal the truths of what the US embassies are doing in Latin America and all over the world, you can rest assured the US government will come for you. But we also knew as well that we have no faith in the Swedish government to do anything. And we have a very specific case study of why we do not trust the Swedish government in any way to protect the rights of Julian Assange. And I tell a story of a journalist, Joaquin Perez Becerra. He was a journalist in Colombia. He lived in Colombia. He was elected councillor of a left-wing group called the Patriotic Union. Because of the threat that this party represented, 4,000 of their members were killed. He went to exile. He picked Sweden as his country of exile. He has lived there for the last 20 years. He has his family there. He is a Swedish citizen. Today, this journalist is in a Colombian jail and the Swedish government is doing nothing to protect this journalist, a journalist that had to flee from Colombia and is now facing supposed charges of terrorism. What is the Swedish government doing for its own citizen? Nothing. What can we expect them to do for Julian Assange? Much less. But we also knew we had to respond, not just to defend Assange, but to defend Ecuador. Because we knew immediately, as soon as he was in the Ecuadorian embassy, that they would also use this to attack Ecuador, as they have already been doing for a number of years. And so it began in the media. The Ecuadorian government. Why would Assange pick the Ecuadorian government which apparently has one of the worst records in regards to freedom of speech. Well, we really know when the corporate media speaks about freedom of speech, what they're really talking about is their ability to control what, what is able to be said and not heard. 
and the Ecuadorian government has very much been leading the way in breaking down this corporate power. When Correa came to power, six of the major um, eight newspapers were owned by banking corporations. Now you can imagine there might be a slight conflict of interest that occurs when you both own a bank and a newspaper in the current global economic crisis, but also the banking crisis that happened in Ecuador in the 90s. What did the, what did the newspapers do there? They reported nothing about the banking crisis. They in fact signed a deal, which was revealed by WikiLeaks, um, and it, because of the US embassy cables, where these um, banking corporations and newspapers sat down and said, we will not report any of this because that way none of our interests are touched. Well, the Ecuadorian government and its people have drafted up a new constitution. In that constitution, if you are a banker, you are no longer allowed to own any media out uh, outlets. That's a pretty important start, I think, for breaking down the corporate power over the media. But that wasn't enough, because a few years later, they held another referendum to further amend the constitution. And now the constitution reads that anyone who is involved in the media industry are not allowed to have any other business interests anywhere else. Because of course, once you do start to have other business interests, maybe someone like Gina Reinhart, this is obviously gonna become an issue when you begin to report on that. Yep. So I think there's a very clear reason of why they wanna get Assange. I think there's a very clear reason of why they're gonna attack Ecuador. And I think that's why it's so important that we are here today, both to support Assange, but I do urge people to also show the support with the Ecuadorian government. Let's show them that millions of people around the world are willing to support them if they take the defiant stand of, of basically saying to the US, we don't care, we are going to defend Assange, we are going to give him asylum. We know we need to do that, we need to continue to do that, but I think we need to do one more thing as well. We need to take the lessons of governments like Ecuador and of other people around the world and use that information that WikiLeaks has made available for us to really begin to fight for real change. Because that information is only powerful when people like ourselves take that into our hands and make use of that information in order to fight for a better world. So I think that's why I want to finish off by congratulating the organisers today and congratulate everyone that's here. And let's hope that we can continue to build that campaign to defend Assange, to defend Ecuador and to fight for that better world we all want to see. Thank you, Fred. Now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Irene Doutney, Greens Councillor for the City of Sydney. I pay my respects to the Elders past and present and acknowledge that this is Aboriginal land, always was and always will be. This is also the homeland of Julian Assange and it is reprehensible that the Australian Government ignores its obligations to protect and support one of its own citizens in his time of need. Rather than defend our citizens, we are opening our borders, our Northern Territory, to American troops and proving that we are truly a client state rather than an independent nation. As a client state, we are too cowardly to take an independent stance on protecting Julian Assange. The government is too busy towing the American line. But we have seen that no country wants to take the risk of upsetting the United States in its vendetta against WikiLeaks and its founder, Julian Assange. We know that he currently sits in the Ecuadorian embassy awaiting a decision that will only give him a temporary reprieve and could see him end up in a country where his safety will be far from guaranteed. However, it is highly unlikely that Assange will ever be able to leave the embassy without being arrested the moment he sets foot on British soil. How he can even get to the airport without being arrested is a matter for speculation. And it is highly unlikely that this will be more than a temporary reprieve in the ongoing extradition battle. The publishing of the Iraq and Afghanistan war diaries and the trench of diplomatic cables showed the true nature of government and the power it wields on the global stage. The war diaries, particularly the film of the heartless murder of an Iraqi journalist, his cameraman and countless innocent civilians, shocked the world and exposed the great disconnect between the American use of power and the fate of innocent Iraqi citizens and citizens around the world. The growing use of remotely controlled weaponry the use of central command stations has dehumanised and desensitised military operations to the extent where it's just another video game. 
This is particularly true where drones are concerned, which are becoming rapidly the new face of government power, whether it's civil or military. WikiLeaks showed the true face of power and its continuing release of cables and documents highlighted the dysfunctional nature of power relations across the world. By exposing these cables and documents, WikiLeaks gave power to ordinary people to see government for what it really is. For most people who saw the video or read the cables, the truth highlighted the real David and Goliath nature of the US war machine versus the ordinary people of the world. This is the real crime that Julian Assange faces. It's not really about dubious rape claims and murky political manoeuvrings in Sweden. It is about the crime of exposing the nature of the state in all its cruelty, pettiness and ridiculous posturing. Now that we have seen the workings of government, we can never go back to the pre, the innocence of the pre-WikiLeak days. We have a duty to protect WikiLeaks and Julian Assange from the heavy boot of power and the neoliberal system it supports. The blockade of WikiLeaks by the likes of Visa, MasterCard and PayPal showed the way big business and the state work together against anyone who dares to expose in a critical manner the Machiavellian nature of power. Last time I spoke, I referred to the importance of truth-telling and how our governments hide the truth and feed people thought bubbles and doublespeak. Our war reporters are embedded with the coalition's troops in Afghanistan and rarely do we see any real analysis in the mainstream media, which was so beautifully pointed out by Jake Lynch earlier. It's all patriotism and flag waving, but little understanding of what is really happening on the ground. We rightly mourn our fallen soldiers, but how little space is given to the suffering of the fallen people of Afghanistan. Rarely do we see stories about how the behaviour of the coalition's troops and the dreaded arbitra arbitrariness of, z of drones are feeding the ranks of the Taliban. We need an independent press to give people a picture of the real world and the machinations of government. We need an organisation like WikiLeaks to keep us informed as they have done in the past. In a world where the Olympic Games, once a celebration of peace, have been hijacked by this, this siege mentality with batteries of rockets on apartment buildings, 36,000 troops to keep the peace, and drones circling overhead. We realise that the dystopian future that has, has been predicted by so much science fiction is with us now. It is a world at a tipping point in every way, and it is essential that organisations like WikiLeaks are able to operate and release information that has always been hidden from regular people like us. It is a world where people are saying enough is enough and movements like Occupy Wall Street and Anonymous are standing up against the establishment. It is a world that needs its WikiLeaks. The Greens have stood behind this movement and we will continue to call for the Australian government to support Julian and in his precarious position as it stands at the moment. Free Bradley Manning, support Julian, and let's keep WikiLeaks keeping the bastards honest. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. And the Greens have been incredible supporters of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, particularly Senator Scott Ludlam um, and Irene and, and many other politicians. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. WikiLeaks is a gift to history. We have now, for the first time, the ability to write history, not only through the eyes of the victors. Wiki WikiLeaks has become a leveller between people and government. It has ushered in an age where we, the people, have access to information once deemed for their eyes only. For years, Australia has wantonly participated in brutal, unnecessary wars in the name of freedom and democracy, as excessive governments can't seem to say no to the US. Thanks to the courageous work of WikiLeaks, we have in, an in-depth resource enabling us 
to put these wars into perspective and make informed decisions as to whether we, the Australian people, think our involvement is wise and in our national interest. Both in the Afghan and Iraq war releases to tell a different story than our government and the MSN would have us believe. It is becoming more apparent that the government's idea of national interest is in conflict with our own. We have learned that the dire situation the people seeking asylum go through, and it suits certain members in our parliament. WikiLeaks US Embassy cables revealed the truth in the agenda behind Stop the Boats. We know that a five country cartel of Australia, US, Canada, South Africa and Switzerland have joined forces to promote mining interests at the expense of Indigenous people and their land. We have learned from the Stratfoil email release that our government is just a bit too chummy with the US and which ministers were communicating with the US in a manner some would regard as treason and or spying. We learned the once faceless men of the Labor Party felt Gillard would be more pragmatic as a Prime Minister than Rudd. We learned that our government was happy to serve Julian Assange to the US regardless of his innocence or his Australian citizenship. We have learned, and this cannot be disputed, that our government is sycophantic in the extreme towards the US and we are hardly more than a client state with a government lacking the maturity to think for themselves regardless what, of us, what Australian people want. We have only recently started to see the latest WikiLeaks release, the Syria files. The release not only allows us to see the machinations of big business and governments regarding Syria, but it, like previous releases, is a remarkable resource for education and training. These things are a gift to history from WikiLeaks. We here today are in the eye of the storm in history. Australia should be proud of WikiLeaks and its editor-in-chief, Julian Assange, in the fight not only for freedom of speech, but freedom generally. We need to give backing to WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. Our government has tried ignoring us. We have written, called, emailed our MPs and senators, often having to inform them of the irregularities of the case. We have used resources like justiceforassange.com to get facts out. We have grown in numbers, and it's our numbers that dictate how long they will ignore us. We must continue to talk to others and inform them. Take to the streets as we have today, ad nauseum. You can sign up f to th the mailing list for Support Assange and WikiLeaks Coalition. The, the mailing list will keep you abreast of actions. All the info you need is on the files that have been circulating. Our government must know we are not willing to lose such an important Australian to their career whims. You can help by purchasing the WikiLeaks CD or donating at WikiLeaks Beat the Blockade site. There is also an array of quality merchandising from WikiLeaks.org or you can throw some coins in the buckets here today or purchase a badge. It is an expensive business fighting bogus charges, an unfair financial blockade and manage the most prolific media outlet the world has ever seen. Now, although there has been a, a win in, the, in Iceland regarding the visa blockade, visa will be appealing. So keep WikiLeaks and Julian Assange in your hearts. Help them help us to leave a free world for the future. Last month, Senator Ludland moved that the prejudicial statements made by senior government members be retracted with the backing of the coalition. I asked Senator Ludland on tw Twitter, is there a time frame for Gillard et al to retract the prejudicial statements regarding Julian Assange and WikiLeaks? He replied, well, I think their time frame is never. So your homework. <laughs> We can start writing, telling MPs, and the Prime Minister particularly, Attorneys General, both Roxon and McClelland, and our Foreign Minister, to honour this motion 
and demand they protect Julian Assange. If history is indeed written by the victors, this is a battle we cannot afford to lose. Let truth be victorious. And now I'd like to introduce Dennis Aubrey with a song he's written, Dirty Little Secrets. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Now, I was going to sing a song about drone warfare that I wrote a while back, which I sent to uh, when it, which I sent to the the folks here recently. And yesterday, I was I got home and I yep, I think this needs to be taken back a bit. Um, <clears throat> Yesterday was the 100th birthday of Woody Guthrie. And the ghost of Woody Guthrie came to me yesterday and gave me a song. Woody Guthrie had a sticker on his guitar that said, this machine kills fascists. I was thinking about getting one that had a picture of uh, the richest woman in the world and say, this machine kills fat shits. Now I want you to help me sing this. The chorus goes, Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. We know what you're doing in your dirty little war. It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. Let's try that again. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. We know what you're doing in your dirty little war. It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. It's hard to keep a secret in the age of information. One little button pushed and it's out there to every nation. Everybody understands the current situation because Julian Assange is around. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore We know what you're doing in your dirty little war It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore Now this is my favourite verse The last line of this verse is my favourite now those who want to hide the truth in the killing industry have a vested interest that they hide from you and me. They spend a bloody lot of money on security, but it doesn't work so well now they found. And your dirty little secret. Flip it. Flip it. We know what you're sorry. Well, dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. We know what you're doing in your dirty little war. It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. Once upon a time, once upon a time, back when I was in my youth, the US Army war machine would cover up the truth. But they can't do that anymore Cause now we've got the proof Of the way they throw their way around And your dirty little secret Ain't a secret anymore We know what you're doing In your dirty little war It's the same thing that they did Time and time and time before Your dirty little secret Ain't a secret anymore now we hope that they don't get Assange, but we know they might, but it won't kill the message. And we know that it's right, the truth is out there, and Assange turned on the light. He should not have to live underground. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. 
We know what you're doing in your dirty little war. It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret any. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret any. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. Thank you. That's it, everyone. We finished for the formal proceedings, but do stay. Sign the petition. Sign our mailing list. Buy a badge. Buy a bag. Support Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. Thanks, everyone, for coming.